Hi. Welcome to Becky's Blurbs. Um, not quite sure how the lighting is at this particular spot, but um, we're going to go with it anyway. So maybe a little bit in the shadows. I um, Just forgive me for that. Um, today I just want to talk about um, anxiety. Uh, I was speaking with a friend who has a, a family member who's just having anxiety attacks. Um, maybe you've had an anxiety attacks, but in this particular case, um, he thinks he's going to die, and um, it's like this impending doom. And um, so she had, you know, texted me to for prayer, you know, to help you know pray for um, him and whatnot. So long and short of it is, um, I just thought about it, and I thought, you know, the Holy Spirit was reminding me there are a lot of people that whether they even recognize it or not are facing anxiety. Maybe not an anxiety attack that's just totally overwhelming and overtaking you, but the anxiety of with terrorism. Um, you know, here in Orlando, we had that the, the shooting here in the, and there's different places in the world that have had the same thing. And, you know, terrorism is nothing but the enemy. Not we obviously they're our enemy, but the enemy as in Satan. Um, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus has come that we might have life and life overflowing, um, life abundantly. And that's his. There were things happening back in Jesus's day. There were things happening. There's nothing new under the sun. So I'm here to encourage you, you don't have to live in anxiety, you don't have to live in fear, you don't have to have panic attacks. Um, some people tend to be more prone to that. I've you know, met people over the years that just, you know, they worry about every little thing. I have my own personal testimony about being set free from worry. Um, and a lot of times it's not so blatant as someone having a panic attack or, um, oh, I'm gonna die. Um, well, the fact is, by the way, yes, you are gonna die, so am I. And the sooner we get to peace, just find peace with that. One day you are going to die. One day I'm going to die. Should the rapture take place, then we'll just leave here. But outside of that, we're going to die. And get find and rest in that. And the reason you need to find rest in that is that it will steal the joy of the days that you have ahead or today. It will take today's joy away, worrying about when that's going to take place and the fear of the unknown and what's going to happen. Um, I even hear the Spirit say there's some of you who have a job interview and like, oh, what am I going to do and what am I going to wear? And, you know, and it's okay. We need to be thoughtful as in taking, okay, yes, I need to dress properly and I need to present myself the best manner I can. But in the when it's all said and done, if you will get into God's peace and allow him to just put you at rest, which he, you need to be at rest and, and allow, and you have to do things yourself. You have to choose the right path in order to have peace um, instead of falling into pieces, P-I-E-C-E-S. Um, we want P-E-A-C-E. -E, um, then you're going to do just fine on that job interview. And if this is your job, God goes before you and you need to speak life. You say, you know what? They're going to like me better than anybody else. I have the favor of God. I walk in the favor of God. God surrounds me with favor like a shield, like the Bible tells us. So the bottom line is, so on Philippians 4, 6 says, and um, this is the amplified version, 4, 6, and then verse 7 says, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. Last time I checked, anything's anything. So no matter what you're facing, whether it's a cancer or, um, you know, loss of a job, how am I going to pay my bills? Um, uh, somebody's literally terrorizing you. Maybe you're, you've are you had spousal abuse and you're afraid of, that he's going to find you or she, whatever the situation is. Or um, And by the way, if you're in a, an abusive relationship, get out. God didn't call you to stay in that relationship. You at least need to separate yourself and get into a safe place and especially protect your children. But anyway, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. But in every circumstance, in every circumstance, every circumstance, not just some, every, every circumstance. So your circumstance isn't beyond the scripture. Your situation is not beyond the scripture. So in every circumstance and in everything, Everything is everything by prayer, petitions, and petitions which are definite requests. Lord, I want to have this particular job. I, you know, you've prayed about it, you're having this job interview, he's opened the door. Give him specific requests, and I pray that I will interview well and then believe. So, with definite request, with thanksgiving, and Lord, I thank you that you've heard me, because he hears us when we pray. I thank you that you hear me. Um, continue to make your request, and it's, in fact, it says continue to make your wants known to God. Some of you are like, oh 
could God really do that for me? You know, it's not, I don't really need it, but it sure would be nice. God wants to bless you. The blurb I just did yesterday was about um, the fact that God's looking to bless you. He wants to bless us. And, and he really is a God who, how many of you want to bless your own children if you have children? I do. Or my grandchildren. I want to bless them. Well, God, that's us as humans. Can you imagine how much more God wants to bless you? Absolutely wants to bless you. And, and it's religion that makes us feel like that he's this little old man sitting up in heaven with this long white beard looking around and go, ah, I got you. Boom, he wants to slap you upside the head. That's not God. That's enemy. He's the accuser of the brother, not God. God is love. God loves you. He wants to bless you. Um, we need to get some of that old religion out of there because God is love and he wants to bless you. And then verse 7 of Philippians 4 says, And God's peace that shall be yours, that tranquil state of a soul, assured of its salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing. You fear nothing from God. God is your protector. You have nothing to fear from God. He is on your side. He wants to bless you. And being confident. I've got confidence. There's a song I used to sing. I've got confidence. God is going to see me through. No matter what the case may be, I know he's going to fix it for me. I don't know if you're... But, way back in the 70s old song anyway so uh, being confident with it that was free no extra charge being confident with it its earthly lot of whatever sort that is that peace that transcends all understanding will garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in christ jesus many of you have experienced this my husband was told uh, you know we went to the hospital um, they were like, we are air you're in the middle of having a heart attack we're going to airlift you um, i was standing there i cannot tell you it doesn't make sense, but I was in total peace. My husband was in total peace. He said when he got up in the helicopter, um, he was like, man, they had him strapped down to a board. He was like, man, I wish I could get up and see that, you know, I'm driving over Orlando and I, that would have been really cool. And the only thing he heard, heard God say, because we didn't have insurance, how would you pay for it? All those things could have come into it. And he said, he heard God say, just don't worry. So he just didn't worry. And, um, literally by the time i drove from the one hospital to the next hospital my son came and met me and we drove down there um he was already out of surgery and they hadn't even come to tell us we found that he was already in icu uh the cool thing about all this is it was his widow maker was 90 percent um clogged as well as two other um arteries and only four percent at that time the percentage was four percent of people survived that there was another man with the exact same situation in fact when i called my son um, and called both my son and my daughter. My um, daughter lived like two hours away, hour and a half away. My son was in, in the area and he was sitting at Subway and he said the scripture came to him, a thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near me. That's in Psalms chapter 91. Well, there was another man, about the same age as my husband, um, very young for having a heart attack, I think, um, looking younger every day. And he, he passed away, um, but it did not come nigh my husband. I'm telling you, you can put your trust in God. I feel the spirit so strongly. So many, you, you need to put your trust in God. Um, I've personally been with my, my mom when she passed away. I was holding her hand. Um, there was another time where she, I didn't, she wasn't even supposed to die. She was in the hospital and um, the Holy Spirit said to me, come against the spirit of death right now. And I'm like, okay, again, not my understanding. It's being led by the spirit. I had no way of knowing because according, I was used to reading her stats, um, her blood pressure, everything looked fine as far as the charts were looking. I'm like, okay. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I come against the spirit of death. The minute I said that, bells and whistles went out. They charged in the room. They moved me out of the room. They, it's, they have the documents. She died, but she came back to life. Um, I happened to be there. So this particular time I was holding her hand and I was reading the scripture to her. Um, I was reading and he who began a good work and he was going to complete it until he comes. I just finished saying that. Well, he came and he took her home and it was peaceful. She never had the death rattle. I mean, we've been with many people when they pass away. She never had that death rattle. In fact, the nurse was there and she was like, this is Rena, this is Rena, because she had signed a no resuscitate, which you know means they couldn't do anything other than that. And um, and she said, I think she's gone. Like the, the nurse in the ICU was shocked. And even her doctor said, oh, that lady will never die. She's the miracle lady because she had had miracle after miracle. She should have died so many times. Um, and in this case, I asked her, it was a Sunday morning. We were setting up for church and I got the phone call and I went to the hospital and I said, mom, they said she's out of, she doesn't know what she's thinking. And um, 
I said, um, so I said, okay. And I went in to talk to her and I said, she said, what are you doing here? It's Sunday morning. You're not supposed to be here. And what happened was she was speaking in tongues. So they thought she was out of it. And I said, well, yes, but they said, this is it. I said, we've seen a lot of miracles. She said, yes. He said, my leg twice was supposed to be amputated and, and they didn't have to take my leg. And I said, yeah. And I only knew about one. No, I'm not, she's very secretive. <laughs> it very likely was too. Um, and then, you know, I said, well, what do you want me to believe with you for? Because she had already had a prophecy that God knew that she missed my dad really, really a lot. And, but he had a work for her to do, but she had the choice. Did she want to go home? She could. And, and that was like a year earlier. And I know the lady that gave the word very, very accurate, wonderful woman of God. So I, I knew it was God. And she didn't even know about all of the circumstance. She happened to be doing a revival in our church. My mom was there. And she hadn't met my mom but once. So she said, you're the lady I had the dream about. So it was an on time. And she's like, um, I could just tell she was just like, it, I, she didn't really answer me. So I said, well, I'm just going to pray that whatever you want, you get. And that's what I felt to do. I didn't feel to come against the spirit of death this time. And, of course, she went home to be with heaven. I mean, with my dad in heaven. And, um, you know, why do you fear death? There is nothing to fear. I was with my grandfather when he was passing away, and then he he came back. They called. They couldn't get hold of my grandma. So Eddie, my husband, and I, and then my mom and dad got there. And my husband and I and one of the pastors from the church that my grandpa attended, um, Clayton Mulvaney, who is now in heaven, and my dad and I just started singing hymns that my grandpa would know. And I'm telling you, the presence of God came in that room. And honest as I stand here because I was probably I'm trying to think I'm probably was too young to even think about going to heaven and as the presence came in I'm like no wonder people don't want to come back when they go to heaven because heaven filled that room in a way at that up to that point I had never felt and I could feel the tug of, of heaven calling my grandfather home I could feel it and such a peace oh you talk about a peace and mom told me my mom told me that when she died the one time it came back I said, do you remember anything? Did you get to see Jesus? Did you see heaven? And um, and she said, no. But she said, Becky, there was this peace I can't explain. And it was so wonderful that I'm not afraid to die anymore. Well, at that point, I didn't even know she was afraid to die. We have nothing to fear. You're going to just, you're just going to leave this earth suit and you're just going to move on to heaven. You'd be escorted out and in, into a place that's just... If we knew more about it, we none of us want to stay here. So I'm telling you, be at peace. And one of the solutions to being at peace is in verse 8 of Philippians chapter 4, which says, whatever is good, lovely, of good reports, praiseworthy, go, you go ahead and read it. And it says, think on these things. Get your mind off of the terrorism. Get your mind off of all of the, oh, you're going to die. And well, you know what? Yeah, one day I'm going to die. So what? And I'm going to heaven. And I'm not making light of that either, because I, I just told you, you know, that I've, I've had these experiences. I've been with people when they passed away, got Christians. In fact, um, my sister's husband had one of his brothers used to be a um, mortician. And he said he could tell when somebody went to heaven and when they didn't, because he said they were much more pliable when they were ready to go to heaven. They had a much more peaceful look on their face. And the people that he said there were some that he would, you know, corpses he would work with, but were just... Um, you know, not not so easy to work with, and like they were terrorized by something. Um, when we only know what that would be, so I um, just want to tell you, be at peace, no matter what your situation. The worst thing in the world um, that could happen to you, God's got the solution, and He's your peace, and He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. So it is very important for you to keep your mind on God and on His Word and believe His Word. And I. Don't, I could preach for a couple hours on this, but this is a blurb. I feel that um, we've gone far enough. I do want to say, if you're not 100% sure if you were to die to go to heaven, you do have a, there is a hell to shun, and there is a heaven to gain. That's for real, and this is not to be, oh, I feel like I'm looking, when I look at it, because I'm in the shadows, which I am, um, but there really is a, a heaven to gain. And if you want to know for sure that if you were to die today in, in the next five minutes, and you are going to die sometime, that you would go to heaven, re just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Father, Father God in heaven, I believe Jesus Christ is your only son. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. 
I believe Jesus Christ rose from the dead on the third day. I believe that Jesus Christ is now seated next to you in heaven. I ask you to forgive me. I receive your forgiveness. <laughs> Yay, I love this. You didn't have to repeat that part. And now I receive your forgiveness. I now know that when I die, I'm going to heaven. Thank you. Thank you, Daddy God. Thank you, Jesus. And Holy Spirit, I ask you to fill me with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the Bible evidence of speaking in tongues. Take my life and do something with it. <laughs> Amen. Now, as the minister of the gospel, I tell you that if you were to die today, in any moment, you're going to heaven. And as you've asked the Holy Spirit to fill you with, the, with himself, that's the next step after asking Jesus to come in and forgive you. Um, that's what gives you the strength. That's what gives you so much that we couldn't go into right now. Just receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And what's going to happen is you're going to speak in a language that is not your native language or a language that you know. It's one you don't know. And um, in fact, let's do it right now. Say, fill me right now, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I receive your infilling. Now don't speak in any language you know. And you can write, you can rewind this, you can look at it again, but I just heard the Holy Spirit say as I was doing that, there are those of you that need to be set free from fear and anxiety. You fear death, you fear every, you know, just even fear getting out, some, some, of, some of you, not everybody, but you fear like, I, I just don't even want to get in my car and drive somewhere. You're afraid to leave your house. You're, this fear is just overwhelming you. Right now, I want you to come into agreement with me. Uh, touch the screen. Touch, um, you know, put your hand on your heart. Whatever you need to do as a, a point of contact. Father, right now, I pray for this brother, sister, whoever it is who's in, feeling filled with anxiety and fear and dread. I command the spirit of fear to come off of them right now. In Jesus' name, fear, you leave. You have no entrance anymore. We we cut you off at the root. We yank you out right now. Just yank it out. Do it. Just take like a, a thing and go, I yank you out, fear, in Jesus' name. You have to go. And where the fear was, Father, I pray you fill this person with the Holy Spirit. Just fill up every area where the fear was. And now I want you as that I pray for to get your Bible out and, and meditate and write it down on a three-by-five card for God's it's first timothy and i'll put it underneath here i think it's 317 and if it's not you'll see the correct thing when i get done editing this but it, for god has not given me the spirit of fear but of power of love in a sound mind so if that's you repeat after me god has not given me becky kane and put your name in there for god has not given me a spirit of fear but i have a spirit i becky kane have the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind in Jesus' name. Just receive, receive it, receive it. I just blow the presence of the Spirit into your place right now. It's blowing into you. The Spirit's blowing into you right now. Like, receive it, receive it, receive it in Jesus' name. Peace be still. Will you have a good day or evening, whatever it is? And then if there's somebody you know who's suffering with anxiety, just forward this um, link, forward, forward the link on to somebody that they can they benefit and be set free as well. If you know someone that needs Jesus, if you know some, whoever needs to hear this, um, don't be selfish, share it. Give it out, pass it to other people so that they can experience the same deliverance and liberty and peace that you're experiencing right now. And by all means, don't be afraid to do that. <laughs> Be free in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.
Shalom, if I can figure this out. Uh, here we go. Shalom means nothing missing, nothing broken, peace, nothing missing, but not, nothing broken. Shalom also means, um, you know, a lot of things, but be prosperous, live long, prosper, health, wealth, healing, welfare. So shalom, shalom, peace, be still.